Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm the CEO of the Dun Bradstreet Credibility Corp. And most of the platform today, uh, in fact, almost all of it, is focused on helping all of you obtain credit and, uh, and capital. And, you know, and, th and that, that is really the goal of our business in general. Uh, that said, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about something a little bit different, which is how to build how to build networks within, within your business. And, and the reason is because as you start talking to banks, as you start talking to lenders, as you start talking to venture capitalists, one of the things you're going to realize very quickly is that they're not just looking at your financial statement, but they're looking at whether you have enough confidence in your business so that you can own a market. And what it really means to own a market is to build a network of customers. And now when most people think about networks, they tend to think about the internet, social networking, uh, and those innovations. But the reality is that it, network building from a business standpoint has been done long before the internet even started. And in fact, most of the companies on the internet have actually leveraged what has been learned offline and applied it, off, uh, applied it back online. So whether you're building an online business or an offline business, network building is probably the most important thing that you can do in your business to convince the audience of investors that you understand your market. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about some offline companies, some online companies, and then give you some proactive steps that you can take to really define what your market is and then dominate it. So the first example I'm going to use is, you know, is the traditional offline business, which is McDonald's, uh, the business that most of us think have nothing to do with the internet, has nothing to do with networks. We, we all know the story in one way, way, shape, or form. Ray Kroc started off literally as a milkshake salesman. Uh, he saw a, a, a small restaurant in, uh, in California run by a couple of entrepreneurs, the McDonald's brothers, was fascinated by it, bought a license at the time, a franchise as we know it now, uh, brought it back to his, uh, his home state in Illinois, and then started to open more and more of these restaurants. Uh, eventually bought out all of the rights from the McDonald's brothers, and McDonald's, of course, became the largest fast food chain on the planet. Uh, however, when you ask Ray Kroc what he was in the business of, he, he never said food, he never said restaurants, he never said fast food. Uh, he always consistently said, I am in the network building business. I build networks of real estate. And his real estate network looks almost identical to just about every other network across the country and in the U.S. This is, this is a, uh, a map of McDonald's across the US, uh, that could just as easily be a map of transportation systems across the US. It could be a map of population across the US. It could be a map of the penetration rate of the internet across the US. What he did was he built a network that was so dense and rich, there was no hope for any competitor to ever come in and dominate in his market. Uh, he didn't have to be selling hamburgers. He could have been selling veggie burgers. He could have been selling tote bags. The point was he built a network that was so dominant and he happened to have a business that was pervasive enough, we all need to eat, uh, that he was able to dominate in a world where no one could before. And what that did was it, it basically left almost all of the businesses in ruins, which leads to the next question of, well, if someone's already dominated a market, how do you penetrate? And what you do is you, you do almost the opposite, the antithesis of building a broad network, and instead you focus on a deep network. And we have one here in Atlanta uh, that's the perfect case study, which is the varsity. When you look at what the Varsity did, uh, they did almost the exact opposite of McDonald's. Instead of building a broad, diverse network, they focused on a single market and worked to dominate that network. They shifted from a real estate network to a customer network, making sure that they knew every single customer in a local geography, and they dominated that local ge geography in such a way, in so pervasive a way, that when you look at the distribution network of the Varsity, no one has ever been able to penetrate in their geographic region. Uh, not McDonald's, not Burger King, not Wendy's, not Taco Bell. Uh, the, the distribution of varsity does not look like the map of McDonald's. And in fact, the varsity has actually carved out a space for themselves uh, that they own uh, by, by leveraging local markets. Uh, so if you can't go big and broad, if you can't do it by geography, focus on local, hyper-local. Uh, varsity has done this. We've seen countless other restaurants do this and compete competitively with McDonald's and some of the other chains in fast food. And we've seen this across all manner of, of business as well. Uh, moving back to, to the internet, uh, Facebook actually did exactly what the Varsity uh, did to build and dominate their network first. And only then 
did they then apply the McDonald's model. So Facebook, as many of you probably don't remember, uh, was not a strong social network five, 10 years ago. In fact, MySpace was the McDonald's of the internet at the time. Uh, and no one could possibly hope to penetrate my straight social, MySpace's social network because it looked like the penetration that McDonald's had. So what did Facebook do? Instead of building a social network that they pushed out to the world, they focused on a single market, Harvard University. They launched it to Harvard. The only people who could join that network were Harvard students. And they waited until they had a penetration rate of north of 80%. When 80% of the Harvard population was using Facebook each and every day and not MySpace, only then did they grow the distribution network. But they didn't do it in a broad, diverse way. Instead, they went to the next market. They moved from, from Harvard to all Ivy League schools. From the Ivy League schools, they then moved to all colleges. From all colleges, they moved to all schools, high schools, et cetera, all in the US. Then they moved to schools internationally. It took three years before Facebook opened their doors to the rest of the world. And as a result of doing that, they were able to move from the varsity model to the McDonald's model and do so incredibly, incredibly successfully. And that's one of the reasons why Facebook's network of networks model has worked so well and has been so pervasive and dominant such that the next Facebook hasn't been able to take over in, in the same way that Facebook did for MySpace. Their network, by the way, looks virtually identical to the network of McDonald's. And the network when they started looked virtually identical to the network of the varsity. So what's a, what's a business, a new small business to do as they look at going and trying to dominate their local market or dominate their national market, whether they're online or offline. The, the reality is we need to understand and remember that we are seeing a convergence of epic proportion when it comes to networks. The, the, there is no such thing as the internet world or virtual world and the offline world anymore. Bricks and clicks are irrelevant. Everything is converging. Uh, and that's a, that's a good thing for people because if you're a local business, it, allow, it now enables you to compete on a playing field that is much more level than it ever could have been before. I'll use another example in the, uh, in the fast food area. So, uh, so Naked Pizza, which started in New Orleans, uh, this company started as a virtual pizza shop. Before they opened their first store, they went on Twitter, they went on Facebook, and they grabbed a following where those customers were. And they went after those customers trying to create a pizza-oriented social environment. And only once they had done that in a concentrated area, down, in downtown New Orleans, uh, did they actually open their first, first store. Now when they open new stores, within, within about nine months before they're going to open a store, they first go on Twitter, then they go on Facebook, and they build an online virtual network in that local geography. And then they grab customers before the customers have anywhere to go, before they can try the pizza. And it's one of the ways that Naked Pizza is becoming successful first at inching their way into a local market, and then over time, moving, in, moving into the market share of the dominoes of the world. Uh, the, you know, the reality in the shift is not looking at real estate, which was the old way of doing it, but looking at the customer network. The customer network in, in real estate overlapped perfectly when Ray Kroc started his network. Now, because of these virtual networks, whether it's a social network, whether it's Twitter, whether it's the internet, you need to be where your customers are. Because if you can do that, you can dominate against someone who already has a stranglehold on the real estate market. And, and that creates a true competitive advantage. Uh, and as we come back to the banking world, uh, that's what bankers are looking for. That's what lenders are looking for. That's what venture capitalists are looking for. Do you have a way to inch your way into a local market and then pound your way to the national and international uh, uh, footprint? So I'm going to leave everyone with, with three key things that you need to do as these markets start to converge, as networks converge. I, I think there is nothing more critical than these, these three things. Number one, be accessible. It is absolutely imperative uh, that you are accessible to your audience. Your customer base needs to know that you're there and you're there for them. Uh, number two, be authentic. There is no way around authenticity these days. Whether you're a dictator in the Middle East, or whether you're running a small pizza shop here in, here in Atlanta. You need to be who you are. It's the only way that people are going to see you as being unique, being differentiated. Authenticity is truly 
truly the, the new differentiator. And then, and then the final thing is whether you like it or not, transparency is here and it's here to stay. If you, if you aren't transparent, and this goes as much for your business partners and your customers as, as it does for your lenders, uh, they are going to be able to find more out about you than they ever could before. Uh, because someone is going to tweet something negative about your business, uh, so it's better to get ahead of it. Um, someone is going to be there on a social network speaking about you. Uh, your strengths and your weaknesses are who you are, and you should own them, and you should be proud of them, and you should be transparent with them. So with that, I want to thank you guys. I want to wish you all the, uh, all the luck in the world, and I think I'm going to be here uh, in, a, in a few minutes to sign books if, uh, if you're interested in reading my book. So thank you guys again.